am a young I am and I am a young black a young black young black a young black 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 equestrian 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 black equestrian equestrian black equestrian equestrian I'm a young black equestrian I am a young black equestrian come out to the horse trailer because the baby was crying oh how old is she seven months okay, oh. okay. <laughs> baby. A lot. yeah yeah for sure all right well we'll talk about that a little later on too but i'm abriana um Aisha. caitlin Aisha, i'm caitlin <laughs> to me too Awesome. So I already started recording. Um, we'll be editing stuff anyway, but um, I just today wanted to talk to you about, so we do the podcast, Young Black Equestrians, mm -hmm. and I recently decided to start a YouTube channel um, just with these visual representations of our, our interviews and stuff. Um, and so we're trying to reach out to people who have different disciplines or different careers in the horse industry that are people of color so when i came across your um dentistry instagram i was like yeah <laughs> she's one of those that we want to talk to so welcome to young black equestrian tv <laughs> appreciate it so um Maisha, if you just want to tell us about yourself briefly, where you're located, you know, the horses you ride and stuff. Um, well, it's not really much. Um, I'm located in Fort Worth, Texas, just uh South Fort Worth and Everman. And um I started barrel racing a couple years ago after a horse accident, I broke my back on mm -hmm. a young horse, and I realized I wasn't really good at riding horses so I began riding lessons and barrel lessons and I was gave up my whole you know white collar career in real estate to make money playing with horses so that's okay. why I decided to get into horse dentistry so yep that's awesome that is awesome that so is cool. what what made you get into horses in the first place um I rode horses as a little kid not really knowing what I was doing but um you know, grew up, thought I had to be an adult, get a job, and realized, hey, I'm not happy, you know, sitting at a desk. So went back to the horses, found my bliss, found my peace, and decided, hey, I need to figure out a way to make money helping horses and helping people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so just describe to us, let's talk a little bit about your, your dentistry. Um, what what does it entail? Like, what do you have to do to become an equine dentist? Um, a lot of school. Um, I know that the vets, they do teeth. They take about three hours of um, education doing horse teeth. And it shows when you go to get your teeth done at a regular just equine vet. Um, they usually just knock down the sharp teeth and keep it moving. And um, mm -hmm. what I learned um, I went to 150 hours and it's quite more extensive than just throwing a rasp in there for, for you know, a couple minutes and, and being out, which the, a lot of vets do. Mm -hmm. So you learn the dynamics of how a horse eats, how they process their food and how it really just starts from the mouth. And um, when you get that education, you realize how important it is to know how a horse's mouth mechanism works. And mm -hmm. if they're not, you know, operating properly they're not chewing properly it's usually because there's something wrong in there and the vets usually don't even cover half the problems that go on in the mouth so it's pretty expensive as far as the education goes um as far as the hours when you want to do a, a specific specialty career correctly right right so is there like a school like a, a equine dentistry program Yes, there are a couple schools here in the United States that um, are accredited schools. I ended up going to one in Michigan, which was really far away. I hauled my horses out there. I stayed in my trailer for a whole month um, and literally went to school every single day, including some weekends. 
um, eight to five, sometimes even later, every single day. And so it was an advanced like fast track class um, versus breaking it up through the year, a couple of weekends here and there. I wanted to get it down. So mm -hmm. it, it was a lot at once. It was very intense, but it was rewarding because I got to go from start to finish within a month. That's awesome. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, did you start it? Did you start right after that month was over? Um, I did start um with my own horses, so <laughs> trial and error a little bit, <laughs> build my confidence up, and they all needed it anyway. So mm -hmm. um, I did start there, and then I started, you know, with my friends' horses around here, and I just took off from there once I got my confidence up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So do you work in conjunction with a veterinarian or do you administer whatever sedatives or anything like that? Well, actually, it's um, the law that no one can sedate a horse other than the owners or a licensed vet in every yeah. single state other than Oklahoma. I don't know why they're the exception, but um, so I do not administer sedation. The owners do. Um, a lot of owners are scared of needles, so there's a gel that goes under their tongue mm -hmm. that they can use themselves, and it's, you know, very easy to do, and anyone can do it, um, so that's usually how I do my sedations. I can do checks and stuff without using sedation, but I can't look in the back of their mouth very well without the sedation. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've had to do both, so I just, I wasn't sure. I wasn't yeah. sure. I, I mean, I know how to do the vein, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to do somebody else's horse just for liabilities reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Um, so what, what conditions like in the mouth do you see are like most, most prevalent? You know, what do you have to work on the most? Um, well, the most common problem is usually sharp teeth. Uh, the cheek teeth is what is called the buckles and the lingual teeth, which is alongside their tongue. Um, those are really, really sharp most of the time. But what I've been seeing, you know, the vet, that's what they knock down, those sharp teeth. But that's the problem. They only hit the, the linguals and the buckles, and there's really high ramps or really long hooks in the front or the back of the mouth, which um, in, impede in the horse chewing properly. So that's the biggest problem I see is maybe someone going in there tinkering with the horse or someone going five years without doing any dental work and now you have an excessive growth of a tooth in the front or the back of the mouth and um, when it gets to the point where it's cutting the horse's mouth on the inside they start losing weight it's w really really bad at that point so it takes me probably an extra 30 minutes to work on those type of horses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's the worst thing I see. Hmm? You said it takes an extra 30 minutes. How long does it take in general? If it's, you know, just, hey, tuning up and little knocking little stuff hit down here and there, it, it can take 40 minutes, 30 minutes. But hmm. that's not usually what I see. So hmm. my horses that I did last year and I go back to, to refloat them and just, you know, make sure everything's good, that's going to take me 30 minutes. But a horse that hasn't been done in five years, it usually takes me about an hour, hour and a half because there's so much work to do. Right, right. Wow. Yeah, I have a um, 25 year old horse that is gonna get his teeth done in this week actually. And I'm just not even ready. Like <laughs> I am well, not ready for it. Cause I know that he has not been done in so long. <laughs> I'm just, I I don't know. I get a lot of surprises. I've seen 20 year old horses with mouths that look like they're 30. I've seen horses that are 30, their mouths look like they're 15. It just depends on the care that they've had routinely over the years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 25, they start losing teeth at that point. So you really can't take down a whole, whole, whole lot. Mm -hmm. And you got to be very careful not to crack any of the teeth because they are overworn at that point. So you got to be really cautious with the older horses. But Sometimes you'd be surprised. They look pretty amazing in there. Well, I hope so. <laughs> One can only hope. <laughs> Have either of y'all ever found like a horse tooth that has fallen out? Yeah, well, okay, so your horses that are young, under the age of three, they have mm -hmm. their baby teeth that are falling out. And sometimes those baby teeth get stuck and they call it caps and the adult tooth hasn't um, had a chance to properly come in because that cap is stuck. 
So yeah. you have to sometimes pull it off, but a lot of times they just fall out in their feed bin or whatever. And you're like, oh, my horse lost a tooth. Well, it's a baby tooth. Mm-hmm. I, thought now, my horse was dying. <laughs> I thought my horse was dying. Oh my! <laughs> I didn't know anything about caps. All I knew was that he had grass sticking out this gray <laughs> tooth. And I called the vet and he was like, all right, I'll be there like when I can. And I'm like, but you don't understand like (laughs) I'm like trying to arrange how I'm going to get to the vet school and I'm like I'm never going to be able to ride in a bit because he's not going to have a tooth there oh my gosh like I went down you know the worst path and then he's like and then I went to work and they were like oh yeah you know it's probably a cap and I'm like (laughs) and then I went and pulled it off and I was like okay yeah just a little baby too. Now that can be a problem though, because sometimes they're they're on there tight and they don't come off and they do um, rub on the opposing tooth, which can cause more wear than it needs to be because that baby tooth's not where it's supposed to be, which is out of the mouth. Mm-hmm. So um, I've had that problem. I've had people not realize, hey, my horse is eight, so has whoop teeth. Like those things are supposed to come out at two years old. And they're like, well, they're, you know, pulling at the bit and it's really hard to train them. Well, there's a wolf tooth there. The bit's hitting that really small, tiny, sensitive tooth. So Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's just being uneducated and unintentional neglect. But that's why it's important to start getting your horse's teeth checked at 18 months. Like he may not need anything at 18 months, but just check it. He may be more advanced in the mouth and needs to get his wolf teeth pulled at that point, you know, so... Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Just being educated, yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, I didn't know that either. My horse still has his wolf teeth, and he'll be he'll be eight this year. So. Oh, are you sure they're not canines? Well, he never had any pulled out, so I some was, horses don't have them. Some oh, horses okay. have. I pulled a horse. Um, he only had one. Mm-hmm. So I pulled the one. Um, mm-hmm. Some horses have four. It mm-hmm. just depends on the horse. Yeah, oh. I don't, I, I know, I, I mean, he has the canines on the sides, but yeah. I haven't seen, I mean, I, it's not that I'm like up, up in there all the time, but I, don't, <laughs> I, I honestly don't think he has them because my, my vet was like, you would, you would know before yeah. now. If before had, now, you would. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah, not. they, they, if you don't see them by three, you're probably not going to see them. Oh, well, good. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's not that hard to pull them out, but they just become such an irritant when you're trying to train a horse. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just in the way. And then also when you're trying to train a horse and their teeth are sharp or, or overgrown and, you know, they're like, well, they're pulling to one side and they're pulling to that side and they don't want me touching their cheeks. It's probably because there's something going on in there. Yeah. Yeah. For so. sure. What are some signs that, um, host, horse or owners can look at um, when it comes to horses' teeth when eating? That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of signs. Um, most common people say either my horse is dropping weight or dropping his feed, he's not eating at all, um, or he's pooping a lot of the whole grain out because um, mm-hmm. he's not chewing it properly. Those are quick, quick, easy signs. If you go to pawn your bit and you brush against their cheek and you know they're ducking and it's sore, Um, their cheek teeth might be um, really really sharp I had another guy um, he's like hey I think my horse needs a tooth pulled like there's like a swelling right going on on his cheek and I just think you know the tooth's falling out Um, it wasn't it was very very firmly in place and there was a hole in the horse's cheek because the tooth was so long it was um, created a gouge in his cheek and it was infected and it was really funky so awkward smells is another thing another clue um some horses have bad habits of salivating a lot and they create tartar buildup especially on the canines which is not good it can rot a tooth out so Mm -hmm. there's a lot of different signs just watching your horse's behavior knowing what the horse's behavior normally is paying attention and seeing a change in it Mm -hmm. especially bit problems is the number one thing um People are like, well, I need to change bits. That's the first thing they go to. I need to change bits. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just need to check and see what's going on in the mouth that's, you know, causing the problem with the bit and then go to changing bits. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's pretty important, like, for us to 
even acknowledge how important the mouth is. I mean, it's literally <laughs> where we're, you know, focusing all of our energy. You know, they'll say, oh, you know, I'm trying to get his haunches over. I'm trying to da da da. But it's like you're in his mouth all the time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whether you're putting food in it or putting a bit in it or, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to take a picture beside them, like their mouth, you know, they say no, was it no hoof, no horse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no mouth. Teeth. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the same thing with the teeth because if you think about it, the horse has to survive off food. So that's the first thing, mm -hmm. the horse prehends grass or whatever it may be in the wild. The grass is, you know, the first um, thing that they eat and when they're prehending or using their incisors to rip the grass, that's the first step. So they taught us in school um, that don't know how to work on incisors. And it's really sad because they're taking all this stuff down in the back and they're going to prehend the grass and they can't properly pull it because the, the incisors are not balanced because you know the vets didn't balance those. Um, yeah. So it starts with the mouth. So if they can't prehend or pull that grass, how are they even supposed to get it in their mouth to start chewing it and processing it and breaking it down? Mm -hmm. um, Another important thing, like you can create bad habits by having a bad mouth. And I know this personally from my horse, I had a vet, oh, he flattened my horse's teeth. Mm -hmm. So like completely, he did not know what he was doing. He flattened all of them. She started chomp chewing. She couldn't chew her food. I had to create mash for her. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. We can't hear you. You muted yourself. <laughs> okay there you go <laughs> okay now we can hear you you said she started chomp eating oh wait she can't hear us hear me now yeah uh -huh. okay i'm sorry she got into a habit of fighting a bit because her mouth was so sore from what that vet did to her and mm -hmm. now she hat in order to prevent her from shaking her head or trying to pull away because she was so used to having pain in the mouth associated with a bit right. so their mouths are very important just as important as their hooves so mm -hmm. yeah what so you said that you recommend um starting to i guess well they're, whether they're being floated or not just at least having check horses teeth checked around two well, they start. They say eighteen months, just because that's where the wolf teeth can start coming in. Okay. Um, but by two, yeah, they should have a dental appointment. Caps are falling off at that point. You need to make sure that they're coming out properly. So two is a good staple, but you can start a little earlier than that. And then, I mean, honestly, if you're gonna be honest, you're supposed to update every six months. But I know, you know, people don't even go for their own teeth every six months sometimes. Right, but right. um at least every year, at least every 12 months. There's so much growth that happens in one year. They grow about three millimeters every year. So you don't want one little tooth getting um, overgrown and causing a small little problem that can be a huge problem later on down the road. Right, right. And so I don't know, well, fun fact, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but horses' teeth like continue to grow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, um, I mean, that it, it never stops, so that consists- No, it does stop. Now, that, that is a misnomer. Okay. Like a gerbil or a rabbit, they keep, 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 keep growing. Mm -hmm. So the horse's tooth is actually, it's actually about that long. So mm -hmm. it keeps erupting up until the root. So your older horse is uh, at the end of its tooth life cycle. So yes, his teeth might start falling out at some point. Mm -hmm. They become more concave, more glassy, more fragile, and eggshell-like once they get older because they're at the end of the root. You only see so much too, and it erupts slowly every year, but they do stop at some point. So it's just deep within the cavity. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Cool, cool, cool. I don't think, how can we tell um, who to go to? Like somebody that knows what they're doing what questions should we be asking first before we just say hey you're equine dentist come work on my horse's teeth <laughs> mm -hmm. um if someone has started to learn about equine dentistry they probably know more than just a regular person um so 
they could probably fool you very easily, but definitely ask questions about incisors, which is the front teeth, which is the number one thing that vets do not do. So it's important mm -hmm. to ask the vet, hey, do you work on incisors? Do you know how to balance the incisors um, while balancing the back of the mouth? Um, that's a huge um, one to ask. Um, you ask them if they use power or hand tools. I use hand tools, I'm gonna learn how to use power later on, but how many hours experience do you have on power? Because um, a lot of people that are going in this industry and learning real quickly about power, they're um, actually damaging horses' teeth by um, putting the tool on too long or not using enough water to cool the tooth down or the tool down, and it's burning up the pulp inside the tooth and killing the tooth, which eventually does kill the horse. Mm -hmm. um, so I like uh, hand tools because I can get in there, fill it with my hand, and, and keep going. Um, I cannot overdo it within 20 seconds on a hand tool. Um, it is more old school to do it that way and that's how you know they did it for hundreds of years before they came out with all this power but it's important to ask what type of tools they are using if you mm -hmm. see them come in with one or two tools get your horse and get out of there i use several tools it takes um, multiple tools for depending on what part of the mouth they're working on mm -hmm. so uh, and you can ask them that you know how many tools do you have how many years have you been doing this um, you can Google a couple quick words and see if they understand the lingo and you know if you use incisors or molars or buckle or lingual, a common person wouldn't know that, but mm -hmm. a blind dentist definitely should know what those words are. Mm -hmm. right. right. I'm getting anxiety about my appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get excited. I mean, getting them looked at is the is the first step. Now, you could see pretty quickly if someone knows what they're doing or not. And, you know, every job's not perfect. I've had jobs where I started working on a horse and I had to stop because the sedation is wearing off where there was too much work to do and I could not do everything in one cycle. Mm -hmm. um, point, case, uh, case in point, the guy that had the hole in his cheek that tooth had grown so long that I was scared of opening up the pulp chamber. So I had to knock it down, come back in six weeks, knock it down some more, and then come back again in another six weeks to finish wow. it out. Because it was so long that I ran the risk of opening up the pulp chamber, which would have killed the tooth and killed the horse. So they're pretty hmm. sensitive animals. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. They are. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true all right so I know and we started talking about your little boy how do you balance you know your workload with being a mom a new mom and everything um that's a work in progress uh <laughs> fortunately his father is also a horse person so that helped um <laughs> You know, he's only seven months now, but he uh, is riding horses and stuff with us, carrying him. So if I got something to do or if I want to go practice barrels for an hour, he'll watch him and, you know, herd the cattle up or whatever on the horse. And by the time he's done, I'll take the baby on the horse and he's, you know, tie down calf rope and on, on the other side of the arena. So we just take turns with it. That's, that's pretty much what we have to do. That's awesome. Nice. Do y'all have your own farm? Huh? Y'all have your own farm? No, we don't, unfortunately. Um, we live at, we live at a boarding ranch. So mm -hmm. um, there's several horses here and um, there is an arena we get to utilize and he helps the landlord with calves so he can practice on the calves anytime he wants to since he helps them. Mm -hmm. It's different living in a in a public place versus a private facility. But yeah, there's lots of horses here, lots of clients in and out. Um, done training with kids. I prefer to train kids, not adults, but um, I do a little bit of that as well on the side. Kids just pick it up easier and listen and fearless. Yes, yes. yes. They haven't <laughs> habits yet. Yeah, and the, and the adults seem to, you tell them what to do, but they're scared and, yes. and they forget and yeah. And it's like, I totally understand because I don't do <laughs> kids, I don't do adults. 
Yeah. I like it out here. Um, it's close to the city, and that's probably why why we haven't moved yet. It's um, mm -hmm. accessible for people to find me. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't have to go to so many farms um, on out calls, but if I have to go to their farm, that's fine, but I rather have them here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, I was going to ask, how, how far do you travel from your home base? Uh, I'll travel anything for the money. No. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do require a minimum. You know, I, I usually, um, you know, if I leave my barn, it's automatic 20 bucks. And then, you know, every 10 miles, it's tacked on from there. But um, I went to Oklahoma to do horses and I required five horses. And so I split the um, travel fee amongst the five owners. And so, right. yeah. But five horses in one day is a lot. I'm sure. I'm sure. Do you it's typically do one in a day? Um, we t I usually do an average about two or three. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe one person brings their friend or one person has two horses. So, yeah, it's usually two or three. Um, and it's pretty tiring after that. It's a lot of physical activity. So Yeah, yeah. Do you work out outside of doing that? Uh, horses is my workout. Um, <laughs> right. so, so. <laughs> free, the free gym membership. <laughs> yeah, proper, what's it called? Proper riding position. That's my workout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've noticed um, I haven't lost my baby weight yet, and I've, I've felt the difference riding with mm -hmm. the extra weight and with my core not being strong anymore. Um, when I do force myself to ride properly, boy, my abs tell me the truth mm -hmm. um, quickly. So uh, the other day I had a horse that wasn't really keeping his head still. I had to bend down, squat down, pop up. I was moving the whole entire time I was doing his mouth. But, you know, that's part of it. You can't just expect the horse to stand there perfectly. You got to move mm -hmm. with the horse. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of exercise in the horse teeth. Mm -hmm. my biceps are pretty strong <laughs> yeah I bet I bet yeah. I mean the sheer amount of force that you have to apply I'm sure that's well those tools are pretty sharp it's just you're consistently holding your arm up back and forth so that's really what tires them out but I've cut myself quite a bit on the tool itself hmm. yeah. it's sharp yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the tools a little bit um does it look like a rasp like for it does, but it's way sharper. Um, the rasp is more like a fingernail filer. This is more like a flat saw, and it's it's very very sharp um, because it literally is ripping off the you know the edges of the tooth, mm. um, and the blades get dull, and I have to replace them. Um, but it's super 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 sharp. And then for like the wolf teeth, I have um, instruments that cut the ligament of the gum line. <laughs> sorry about the chickens, <laughs> oh, away from the horse's tooth. And so that's really sharp too. And you got to be very careful and very slow. So it's important to have good tools. Um, the most important tool I have is my spec because that keeps my arm and my hand safe. Mm -hmm. It pries the horse's mouth open and keeps it open while I'm doing my work. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And so I know you were saying that um, a lot of veterinarians don't, um, you know know how to balance the incisors how do you do that with the speculum that's what keeps our mouth open right yeah. i actually have a gag for that and you can buy them online but i made my own and um it literally is just a really big round rubber tube and it goes in their mouth like a bit would but it keeps their mouth open to where i can work on their incisors mm -hmm. and um, not worry about them chomping down they prefer the gag over the spec because the spec mm -hmm. really gets pressure on their jaws but um mm -hmm. i work on the incisors last because by that time my drugs are kind of wearing off mm -hmm. the incisors seem to have more nerve endings and it wakes them up even more so i wait to do the incisors to the very end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. how do you yeah, say Huh? How do you sanitize the tools? Um, I use soap and water, Dawn soap and water, mm -hmm. honestly, but the stainless steel stuff, um, anything that, you know, like my wolf teeth pullers, where it's a lot of blood, um, I use chlorhexidine 
and I mix mm -hmm. it with water. It's concentrated. I mix it with water, but I also use that to rinse their mouth out. I don't know if you ever heard of chlorhexidine, but I mean, your dentist will give it to you if you have some oral infection or something going on. They'll give it to people too. So it's just um, a more concentrated form for the horses. So it's just a mouthwash okay. pretty much. Huh? I said, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And you can buy it at the pet store or whatever, but um, yeah. Yeah, it just rinses their mouth out, especially with the nits and cuts they get when you're floating them. Um, just keeps it from infection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we use, um, I, I, I can't remember what percentage it is, but it's like, we use it for surgery also um, as, yeah. as a surgical surgical scrub beforehand. Yeah. So that is awesome. That is awesome. So in, in being a young entrepreneur, <laughs> what um, advice do you have for people who would want to kind of go into the equine dentistry world or even just starting their own business um you know what I've had a lot of negativity um I had a lot of people doubting me and downing me and saying that that's too advanced or it's too much or you're too old to learn that and you know if it's your passion and your dream go for it I left a very mm -hmm. successful real estate career to work with horses because it made me happy it was my passion and you know do what you love do what makes you happy and my vet he um started vet school at 35 was he too old to go to vet school obviously not because eight years later he has his own practice now so um go after your dreams don't let anyone you know tell you you can't but what i wish is i wish that i would have took more time to learn more basics and how much care horses do require and I think I would have got on a better foot had I took those initial steps to learning really how to build a relationship with a horse. Mm -hmm. so, but go for it. I don't let no one hold you back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great, great advice. Great advice. So anywho, well, Caitlin, do you guys have any more questions? I do. And this question I always get when I, whenever I'm around kids and stuff, they always ask, can you brush your horse's teeth? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That um, was like a loaded question. Not really, but um, I've known people to floss <laughs> their horse's teeth. With I have known one lady <laughs> with floss. I know oh one lady, gosh. she did brush her horse's teeth, but I think she was just mental, but they don't really require the brushing. Um, but every once and again, you can get an excessive gap where hay does get stuck in between their teeth. Hold on one second. He's like right here. Hey, rooster, go. Hey. You got a lot of rooster. <laughs> but, yeah, so I have to dig out hay sometimes. I had a client the other day. One of his incisors was displaced. And so there was a gap, um, very small gap, where really the tooth should have been. And I had to pick some of that hay out, but I was like, I'm not going to be with you every day. So you need to watch this and make sure that an infection doesn't get in there. Mm -hmm. He really can't floss the horse's teeth. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess some crazy people do, um, but it's not required. <laughs> <laughs> what about to keep the, the amount of tartar build up? Is that the same thing, just using a rag? Um, no, you cannot get it with a rag, actually. Um, my horse salivates a lot. He he just has an anxiety thing where he sticks his tongue out a lot and he salivates a lot. So mm -hmm. his canines build up really bad with tartar. Usually those are the teeth that do get the tartar. Sometimes mm -hmm. the incisors do, but the canines are the worst. And the guy, this guy from Mississippi asked me what to do. And I said, well, it's very simple. You can do it yourself. Get some pliers, apply a minimal pressure to the canines and twist. And you'll just see that harder to come off like a candy show and he did it and he was like felt so accomplished that he did this but it was so simple um no one just had told him about that before he mm -hmm. was worried that the tooth was infected because it was so caked up with tartar mm -hmm. and once he did that it was gone I said just watch it every six months to a year it might build back up if your horse has a salivating habit and uh it was a pretty simple fix anyone can do it don't need to be you know schooled on it or anything just get some pliers and twist it off mm -hmm. cool that's cool do you, I will 
Yeah. Do you see a major difference in um, like the growing habits of regular size horses versus dra draft horses versus mini horses? Um, I think all horses, um, their teeth erupt just differently depending on their work and their um, eating habits. I feel like horses that are stalled more and on grain, they tend to be um, the horses that have a lot more problems. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really matter if the size of their horse. Um, it depends on what they're eating and chewing and, and doing. Um, horses that have hardier foliage, like alfalfa or maybe one that chews on trees sometimes for minerals, mm -hmm. they seem to have more of a balanced mouth because they're grinding their teeth. They're using their teeth the way they're supposed to in the wild. Um, and they seem to have less problems, but you know, one tooth can get out of control and jack the whole mouth up. So yeah, it really is just a horse by horse thing. I've worked on draft horses and I don't know why they seem way easier, even though they're way bigger, um, their mouths are way more intense, but um, they're just a calmer demeanor. So they're easier to work on, but they have just as many problems as a pony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had my veterinarian uh, when I went to get my mini castrated. Mm -hmm. She was like, are you sure you bought a seven-month-old mini? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, plus or minus like a couple weeks. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's around his age. And she was just saying, she was like, his teeth look like he's three. And I'm like, well, girl, he just hit a growth spurt like while I had <laughs> Like, you can't tell me that got a mini horse at three years old that grew like that. Like, his legs got long. Right. I couldn't pick him up anymore. Like, I was like, no, he was definitely a baby. But she was so convinced that he was around three. And then later on that week, she texted me and was like, oh, my God, I just saw another mini horse who was supposed to be pretty young. And her teeth looked like she was older. And I was like okay she's like maybe that's just a mini horse thing but I'm like now so you mean to tell me his mouth is old now I have to like <laughs> you know track him well, earlier um it's funny you say that a lot of people do go off of teeth for the age and there's really unless you know when that horse was born mm -hmm. um you know saw it yourself or have papers you can't really exactly pinpoint the age. Um, you can get a ballpark estimate and they go by the teeth and they go by the Galvain's groove in the first notch in their incisors. It is harder to age. Um, I would say a mini or a donkey um, horse because their teeth are a little different and I'm not gonna say they're dork, but um, their breed is a smaller breed. So it is harder to tell the age on those, but I bought a horse. The guy said he was seven. I'm like, I got a mature horse. It's awesome. I took him to the dentist. He's like, yeah, he's turning four. <laughs> Just now starting to come in. And at, back then I didn't know anything about teeth. And mm -hmm. uh, they swindled me because I was asking for an older, more mature horse. And they gave me this young baby horse that barely knew anything. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, definitely if someone's telling you a horse is this age and selling the horse to you, it doesn't hurt to have the vet, hey, can you look at the incisors and maybe guesstimate their age to make sure they're really telling you the truth. But the mini and the donkeys are really, really hard to pinpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that makes me feel better because I'm just like, yeah. no, he's a baby. He's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know why they, you know, swindled me on the opposite. Normally people say the horse is younger than they are, mm -hmm. but because I desired an older horse, that's what they were telling me he was, so... Right, right. But do you recommend, um, you know, I know a lot of people don't do pre-purchase exams, but, you know, how important would you say that is, especially looking, I mean, not only at teeth, but lameness and everything else. How um, important would you say that is? How important is your pocketbook? That's what I would say. <laughs> um, pre-purchase exam is extremely important. I don't care. I think I was looking at a horse for $500. And I looked at another horse for $10,000. They both got a pre-purchase exam. I don't care what the price is. Um, mm -hmm. I want to know what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. So the $500 horse had some lameness issues. Guess what? Didn't buy the horse. It was cheaper, but he had more problems. So super important. Um, 
it also helps to see how well the other previous owner took care of the horse. Was the horse just turned out to pasture? Was he stalled every day? Does he have cribbing um, problems? Does he have anxiety or lameness or, or sensitivity? My uh, expensive barrel horse ended up having thin soles. Mm. Easy fix, but it was something I needed to know before I started using him. You know? Right, right. You so, spent most money diagnosing. Yeah, I mean, and with the amount of problems horses have these days, because us as humans have domesticated them, put them out of their environment into stalls, they are getting more problems and more issues. So it's just important to see what all is going on. Someone could tell you all day that the horse is healthy and then mask a problem, you know, that mm -hmm. the vet or someone else could really see. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to take a friend with you, someone else that's another horse person, you know, just a second set of eyes or a second brain to ask questions. That's mm -hmm. what you're paying for the pre-purchase exam is questions and going through things on the horse. Yeah, right. that's the truth. That is the truth. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. I don't want to take up all of your day, but I think the sheer amount of information you shared, like a lot of people didn't know, didn't know, yeah. including me. <laughs> yeah. I think you can learn no matter what. I don't care if you're 50 years old, things change every day. You could always learn something new. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a horse owner, get educated, stay educated. You know, I always, I love YouTube. I love looking up information. So it's great that you guys are making this podcast to help people learn more. Mm -hmm. It's super important because the more you know about horses and how to take care of them, the better life they'll have, the more balanced life mm -hmm. you guys will have together as a, as two partners. So. Right. That is the truth. That's the truth. So. Yeah. Shout out your, your socials if you want people to follow you. <laughs> um, I do have the Twisted Bit EQD um, Instagram as well as on Facebook. Um, I post a lot of funny stuff on Instagram because, you know, that's Instagram. But um, <laughs> I'm always available to answer questions, you know. I like to have fun. I like to educate people. I like to help people. Even if they're in Mississippi or any other state and I can help them, I will. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. You have a thank great day. You. I appreciate you guys too. You girls. Bye. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you for watching YBE TV. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay updated with our newest content. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. We are on Instagram and Facebook. Our Instagram handle is at Young Black Equestrians TP. Remember to use hashtag Young Black Equestrians or hashtag YBE when making posts to social media. Tune in next week for another episode. Enjoy your week.